Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Tonight we have a very special guest with us. Tonight we're having Savannah Kangas, who is also better known as Miss Hampshire County 2021. Savannah, how are you tonight and thank you for joining us. I am doing quite well tonight. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to have you and I wish I had a crown of my very own, but you have to earn this crown. And Savannah's going to tell us a little bit tonight about her story about being in pageantry and what all is involved and some of the goals that she has as Miss Hampshire County and what her newest upcoming goal is going to be. So tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get into pageantry? Um, it was kind of funny. My uh, best friend at the time, Samantha, she was actually, she had been doing the pageant for a couple years at the time. And, um, so one day we were at dance practice, it was over the summer and they needed contestants for the local pageant. And she was like, Savannah, you should do the pageant. You'd be good at it. And I was like, Samantha, I, I was a little tomboy at the time. You know, I didn't, I didn't think that I'd be very good at any of like the pageant stuff, the walking, the waving, anybody. I was like, Samantha, I've never done anything like that in my life. Cause you know, my mom, yes, <laughs> my mom never entered me in like the little pageants, you know, that where they like mm -hmm. walk and they pose and they turn around and then they pose again and just, mm -hmm. just walking. My mom never entered me in any of those. She never thought that I'd be interested in it. So I was like, Samantha, I can't do that. And so she pushed and pushed and somehow I got the bravery and I did it. Of course, I didn't win. It was my first time going out there. But, you know, that's it takes a couple times to win. Well, I'm sure it takes a lot of courage. How old were you? I was 12 going on 13 at the time. So I've been in pageantry for about 10 years now since I'll be wow. 22 in August. That's phenomenal. Because I, I really do think that would take a lot of courage to, you know, especially if you say you were a tomboy and then someone approached you. I would have to do a double take as well if that's not something that I grew up doing. Yeah. I it, think. Like, I, w I was a girly girl a little bit in mm -hmm. the way of the way I like to dress, but I was very much an outside kid. Like, I like to be outside. I like to, you know, play in the dirt and do all sorts of fun <laughs> things like that. All the things. Do you still do that at this age or now have you kind of put that to rest? <laughs> um... <laughs> I kind of stick to playing in the dirt to gardening, you know, a little more sophisticated <laughs> now that I'm a little older. Graduated but... to gardening. I, yes. don't, I don't blame you there. It's easier on the nails. Yes. So tell me, what all what all does it involve when you're in pageantry? Now, I've heard some stories that there's no longer a swimsuit competition. So what are the categories that you have to practice for and what do you compete for? Because we have a big pageant coming up that we're going to talk to talk to you about in a minute. So what, what pageant or what categories rather are you training for currently? Um, so there's a couple phases of competition. The first phase, um, and one of my personal favorites is private interview. So you go backstage with a panel of four to six judges, just depends. Um, and they sit there for 15 minutes and just grill you on any and all questions that they can come up with based off of a resume and a social impact initiative statement that you make. Um, they just ask you questions based upon that. Um, and so, sorry, I lost my train of thought. I am. It's okay. Well, why don't you tell us what is your social impact initiative about? Because that sounds pretty serious. What is, what is, so everyone has their own separate social impact initiative. Is that correct? Yes. A social impact okay. initiative is essentially, you know, the issue that we feel in modern times is most important to us to promote throughout our year of service. So mine is um, children's literacy in West Virginia. Mm, uh, my, it's mine is specifically titled um, Boots, Books, Open Opportunities to Soar because I like to discuss with children and adults alike um, the importance of reading books and how many skills that you can gain from being well-read. Um, but I've actually kind of shied away from that a little bit um, because literacy rates in West Virginia are actually 86% um, of children read at um, grade level, which before... That percentage was a lot lower. When I started this platform, I started this platform when I was 12 and I've, or not platform, social impact initiative. It's, it's old talk. That's old pageant talk. I am, I'm a vet of pageants and Clearly. they used to be called page. They used to be called platforms. Now they are social impact initiatives. So, um, but I've been working this social impact initiative since I was 12 and for a long time, I was focused on getting children more interested in reading. But now my focus has kind of shifted from that to uh, creating accessibility for all children in West Virginia to have books available to them. Um, because the obviously, as I said, 86% of kids read at grade level. So 
Is getting like, kids to read is not the issue anymore. That's not the issue that is at hand anymore. The issue at hand is making sure that they have the literature available available to them to help them grow educationally. Wow. And how do you think that that can happen? By more public libraries or a larger public library system? <coughs> so actually, um, I've been working in conjunction with the Brooklyn Public Library because they actually offer this awesome service online. So in Brooklyn, New York, the Brooklyn Public Library offers a service where um, you can have an online library card where they have every single book available in the Brooklyn Public Library on a file online as an ebook. Wow. Um, and so with that online library card, you are able to check out any of those books. Now, of course, you would think that I would just encourage everyone around here to check out, you know, get a online library card from the Brooklyn Public Library. Unfortunately, however, you have to pay for that service if you're not a resident of Brooklyn. And obviously, in the state of West Virginia, where, you know, poverty is of the essence, you kind of, it's kind of hard to ask people to put out that extra, absolutely that extra money just absolutely. for their kids to read. You know, most people won't do that. Most people are more worried about um, just getting food on their table and keeping their lights on. They're not really worried about their kids having books. Especially when they have gas in the car was the price of gas. Oh yeah. Um, and you know, there is the public library, but also not everyone has the time to be able to take their kids to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the library. So I've kind of been working in conjunction with the Brooklyn public library to figure out how I can make that service available across the, across the entire state of West Virginia. Wow. Because most people have at least access to a computer somewhere, whether mm -hmm. it, it may not be at home. It could be at school. Um, it could be anywhere. So they don't necessarily have to go to their public library um, just to get the books that they need to, in order for their children to continue to grow themselves. That's phenomenal. And I think that's a really important initiative that you're working on. I mean, I think all states, but particularly West Virginia, where we really do, unfortunately, we're, you know, we're a bit behind other states. And, and you know, there's so much to be said about reading and literacy. I mean, you can lose yourself in a book and reading is a skill that you can use forever. You use it every single day, whether yes. you know it or not, you use that skill every single day. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot more kids might fall in love with reading if they had more, a variety of books accessible to them. And all the kids are online nowadays. And I think having, knowing that they're accessing a book from Brooklyn might, might be a really keen idea as well. I think that that's really good. How did you get hooked up with the library in Brooklyn? Like, how did that happen? Uh, I was kind of, because I was kind of stuck on things to do for my social impact initiative this year. I was trying to figure out, you know, because my first, my first thought was, oh, you know, let's help children find the book that, the genre of books that excites them most. Because for me personally, I really love fiction. So mm -hmm. I'm al almost always gravitate towards fiction books whenever I'm in a library or a bookstore. Um, but then as I was trying to, you know, encourage kids to find that book that inspires them the most to read, um, I was noticing that their libraries in school, which is primarily where they get their books from, were lackluster. They were not, there was nothing in there. So no then- they don't want to read. <laughs> yeah. So then that was where I kind of figured out that the problem isn't getting them to read the books. The problem is them having the access to it. So mm -hmm. then I started thinking and brainstorming and out of nowhere, almost like a sign from the heavens, I saw a random post on Facebook talking about the Brooklyn Public Library's um, service. And so I looked into it to myself to see, you know, how legitimate it was. Because I was, you know, I can't believe everything that I see on the internet. I was, True. True. I was a kid that grew up in the age of the internet. You can't believe everything you see on the internet. <laughs> That's an important message, too. <coughs> <coughs> Bless you. I think we both so have a sorry. frog this morning. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I saw that post on Facebook. I started investigating a little bit more. So then out of a long shot, I sent their help desk a message. I just sent them an email saying, hey, I am a local title holder in West Virginia and I am really interested in the service that you offer in Brooklyn, New York, and really interested in seeing, um, you know, how I can implement that service in my county in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, and it took a couple of weeks. But I finally heard back from Amy at the Brooklyn Public Library. Amy has been my girl through this whole thing. She's been amazing. She, you know, initially asked me, like, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me a little bit about what you want. And so, you know, I told her my ideas and 
what I wanted to do. And she was like, well, I can tell you really have a passion for literacy and sharing literacy with others. Um, so how about we, you know, have a Skype call to discuss these things. And, um, so far her and I are working out of time because the Brooklyn public library service, like their email service isn't always like up to par. So, and you also have something else coming down the pike that's been keeping you pretty tightly wound up. So you've had, in addition to your working on your campaign all year, you've also been preparing for something else. Um, before I get ahead of myself, I just wanted to thank you for what you're doing for the entire state of West Virginia, the children. And I'm sure, you know, if the children start getting interested in the books that are available to them on the on the Brooklyn Library, you know, maybe the adults will as well. And I think that only good can come from that. And I want to thank you on behalf of all the parents. I'm a parent as well, that you've, you're making these things available to the kids, I think it's um, nothing better can come of that. I mean, who couldn't enjoy a good book? But tell us a little bit more about what's coming up here then in the next few days that you've been working on. Um, so as of Wednesday, I will be going to Martinsburg, West Virginia, to the Airborne Church and Event Center to compete at the Miss West Virginia State Competition. Um, it's... That means you'll be running for the title of Miss West Virginia. Yeah. That's exciting. That's exciting. Oh, very exciting. It's it's kind of <laughs> surreal how I've made it to this point. You know, I've been competing since I was a teen. I was Miss Mountain Laurel's Outstanding Teen, and then I competed for Miss West Virginia's Outstanding Teen. And, you know, you never think that you're going to see, you know, yourself in a different position until you are. I never saw myself as a Miss until I was, and now it's kind of, it's kind of crazy how everything has happened so quickly. Is that because um, I know you've referred to yourself as an introvert, yet you're able to get on stage and answer interview questions that are questions that you're not, you can't necessarily prepare for, that they can just come at you with these questions, yet you're able to get on stage and answer these questions at random. So how do you relate to that by being an introvert, yet you can still get into pageantry? For some of the people out there who might be, say, I'm an introvert, I couldn't do something like that. How do you, how do, you do that? Um, I, I just kind of look at it differently, I guess. I, yes, I'm an introvert and yes, I have a hard time discussing with people face to face, um, what I think and feel upon things. Um, but speaking on stage is just a totally different environment. You know, when you're on stage, you can't see anyone's faces. You can't see the inflections that they have on their faces. You can't see their facial expressions or their reactions to what you're saying. It's almost like you're just having a conversation with yourself while you're up there. So it's, not really that scary, which is weird to say coming from an introvert, but like, uh -huh. mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, on stage question has always been one of my favorite um, facets wow. of competition, just wow. because I enjoy getting up and talking in front of people. It's like I said, it's like m me having a conversation with myself. It's me talking about all the things that I'm most passionate about. I think you also have a lot of good self-confidence too and self-esteem, and that's probably probably pays the place lays heavily on you that you're able to get up and talk about these issues that they can come up with. So if there's anybody out there watching that was considering or might be considering maybe having their child get into pageantry or they themselves get into pageantry, like, is there ever a time where it's too late to get into pageantry? Cause I know they have miss contests and then they have Mrs. Contests, but what would you do if you had a child say that you think you think might be interested in pageantry? What, what would you advise them to do? Um, so it all depends on your age. So from 13 to 17, you can compete as a teen. And then from 17 to 25 or 26, I believe, you can compete as a miss. Um, and the best advice I can give you is just start researching locally. You know, you can find a, you have to figure out what organization works best for you as well, because there are different organizations other than the Miss, Miss America organization. There's Miss USA, there's the Fairs and Festivals organization. I mean, there's a whole list of mm. organizations that you can compete for. You just have to find the one that fits you most. Uh, Miss America just happened to be the one that kind of tickled my fancy a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and just get connected with the directors you know directors mm -hmm. are you they are your greatest asset when figuring out you know what pageant you want to compete in and where to go and what your next steps are they're going to give you you know all your information all of your paperwork or even um people that you know that are title holders they will be happy to give you information on um their upcoming pageants and like different things that they're competing in and a lot of them have um 
particularly the one that you're running for now, has scholarship opportunities. Since I'm going to go ahead and brag on you, you just recently graduated. She's now a she. Savannah is now a licensed respiratory therapist at our local hospital, which is huge. And when she wins the competition, not if, when she wins the competition, she it's a scholarship opportunity, and they will pay for how much of your your education is paid for for how much? I can't quite remember the exact number off the top of my head, and I don't want to tell anyone wrong, um, but I know it's a decent chunk. It's definitely a decent chunk. I know the current Miss West Virginia um, had all of her undergraduate degrees paid for, wow. and she's going to college completely debt-free right now. That's huge. Um, because she, I think she won like $12,000 in scholarship, something around, something along the lines there. So, I mean, even though $12,000 in the grand scheme of things, especially when you're going to a large university, doesn't seem like a lot. That is a huge chunk taken off of, you know, your personal burden when you're essentially probably going to be paying student loans for the rest of your life. You can definitely cut down on a lot of that compounding interest. Plus, there's a lot of incidental expenses when you're a college student. As yeah. I'm sure you've uh, recently learned now that you've graduated. So tell me, you know, we all, <clears throat> excuse me, I always equate everything to the Miss Congeniality movie because it's one of my favorite movies that Sandra Bullock was in, even though it's a scholarship opportunity. But I know that everyone's really into the, you know, of course, it's about your inward beauty first because beauty comes from the inside out. But as far as outward beauty, um, I know you love earrings and cute outfits and stuff, but tell me a little bit about your beauty routine because this is a beauty channel. What do you do to take care of your skin that's flawless and Savannah can do a great cut crease on her eyelids. Love it. One day I'm going to have her back on here to show you guys because it's not a look that would work for me, or at least I would never attempt it. But what is your beauty routine? Tell us what you do. Um, so essentially just to take care of my skin itself, uh, I always make sure to take my makeup off at night. Um, just keep a clean face for when I go to sleep, for when all my pores open up and all the oil comes out. Um, I always try to wash my face too, um, especially working at the hospital. They have all those dehumidifiers to keep the humidification out of the air so then of course yeah. your skin naturally produces oil to compensate for the lack of moisture that's in the air so i come out Dennis. with if i wouldn't clean my face i would come out with a huge just sheet of acne right here because as they call it mask me oh you have to wear a mask all day and mm -hmm. that the oils from your skin collect in that mask if you wear the same mask every single day gross don't do that change yep, your mask don't do that um, but if you wear the same mask every single day, the oil builds up and then it just collects on top of your oh, skin, wow. completely breaks out your pores. Don't trust me in the depths of respiratory therapy school. I wore the same mask for a couple days. Not proud to admit it, but I did it. Well, all those nights of studying and yep. rushing to the hospital to do your internships, I'm sure. And traveling back and forth to your, your hospital where you did your internship, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Sleep deprivation, studying, and all the things that went with it. You did what you had to do to get through. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that watch this that probably work in the healthcare industry and maybe have experienced the same thing as you. And I think that's a really good tip that if you do work in an industry where you're still having to wear a mask, your entire, usually you guys work 12 hour shifts, that you do wear a clean mask every day and make sure to cleanse your face really well. Yep. Really well. So, is there anything special you do to get your face ready, like pageant ready? I mean, you look like you're flawless all the time, anyways, but what, what's your favorite makeup? Um, what's your favorite thing to put on? Lipstick, eyelashes, what is it? Um, my current favorite uh, makeup is probably the Mary Kay uh, mascara. I don't, I don't know what it's called. I don't lash know. Lash intensity. Which, yes, lash intensity. Yes. The I the primer and the mascara. Listen, I was never a person who used eyelash primer, like ever. But I started using that, and my eyelashes. I kid you not, people. My eyelashes grow while wearing mascara, which is just <clears throat> crazy. Because I used to be the person that put Vaseline on my eyes every single night to make my eyelashes grow. Oh dear. Yeah. Oh dear. Oh dear! Hey, you like I was for trying now because you've got beautiful lashes. That's for sure. Oh yeah, I mean it worked for a little while, but then eventually, of course, my eye, my pores got clogged, my eyes got tired of it. It led to all sorts of infections that just weren't worth yeah, it. Yeah, you get a little conjunctivitis going on in there. Just a like little that. bit. But you live in, you know, you live and you learn. You Got to try different things, see how they go. But yes, the eyelash primer, absolutely <laughs> my favorite thing. <clears throat> Even if I don't put on mascara, <clears throat> I'll just put that on. Mm hmm. Because. Mm -hmm. Even if I'm not wearing mascara, that it has all sorts of vitamins in it, lots of B vitamins to help your lashes grow. Mm -hmm. um, and then the mascara just lengthens my eyelashes to like they're all the way up here. It's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely amazing. 
I love that stuff. I live by it. Um, I was just recently introduced to it a couple months ago, and I, I live by that mascara. I will never go back to another one. That's wonderful, and it looks phenomenal on you, too, as well. Now, are you an avid user of sunscreen? How do you feel about sunscreen for your skin? Oh, absolutely. Working in healthcare and also being in the beauty industry, um, I definitely think that, I definitely see the importance of sunscreen. You know, I see people come in all the time with all sorts of melanomas and different things oh. on their skin, mm -hmm. um, moles that are infected now or moles that have turned green and, you know, have got, have turned into a melanoma or a oh, carcinoma, Lord. you oh, know, Lord. because they didn't use sunscreen. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's all because they didn't use sunscreen because mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, things happen, skin changes, Correct. but Correct. you know, some of it is due to the fact that they didn't use sunscreen or, you know, God forbid they went out in the sun with baby oil all over them and <laughs> Because, you know, that was a... I grew up in the 80s. <laughs> I, uh, don't don't Done let it. me fool you. I did that once, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you'll get tan, you'll get burned. Oh, Lord, it's just... Oh. Make a lot of poor decisions whenever you're young. It's okay. You live, you learn. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I am an avid user of sunscreen. I'm very fair. I'm very fair-skinned, if you can't tell. Um, I don't get very tan. I burn as soon as I step out into the sun. So uh, sunscreen is my best friend. Always. Yeah, I'm glad you're using your sunscreen. It also helps with with aging, too. You know, you don't get as many wrinkles, feet, wrinkles, the lines, and brown spots because um, those definitely come from the sun as well. And Oh, yeah. As you get older, they really show, and it does make you look a lot older. Wrinkles run in my family. My family's skin does not have a lot of collagen in it. Stretch mark, wrinkles, mm -hmm. just we are prone to them. Yeah. Well, like I'm glad crazy. you're being proactive, especially with the industry that you're in and having the education that you have now. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it is really dry in here. We're both coughing. Oh. <clears throat> I need to... <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good Lord. People are going to think that we're like chugging on cotton balls over here. I need to run a humidifier in here, which is also good for your skin. Did you know that sleeping with a humidifier near your bed actually helps put moisture back into your skin? But that's another video. <laughs> we'll do another day. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to come on. I know you've got a really busy schedule with your pageant coming up this week. This is so exciting. I'm really, really excited for Savannah. I know she's going to go on to do great things. She's going to be our new mess with Virginia. Yes, yes, yes. And um, then she'll be working on another campaign. And we'll definitely have her back on here. I want to have her back on here to do her cut crease eyeshadow. It is phenomenal. I love how she does it. She's the expert in that, so we're going to have her give us a tutorial, but that's going to be after she gets some of these responsibilities taken care of with her pageant and her new job as a respiratory therapist, keeping her quite busy. Um, again, thank you for coming on. I'd like to have you back, and I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. Thank you if you managed to stay all the way to the end. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. It really helps me with the algorithm. And again, thanks for taking the time to visit with us, and we'll check you out next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.